there you welcome to another exciting edition of new generation i hope you've had a great week so far my name is faustina safo and coming up in this week's edition 10,000 children work as slaves along the Volta Lake. Also, we shine the spotlight on theater in Ghana as we interact with two students of the School of Performing Arts at the University of Ghana, Legon, and smoke from refuse dumping sites in a shaman pose health threat to pupils. All this and more we have lined up for you. You don't want to miss any of this. You're watching New Generation. Do stay. Welcome back from the break. Now remember you can join our conversations online on Facebook at News Generation GH and on Twitter at News Gen GH. Now to our first story. They are slaves of young victims. Children on fishing boats either scooping water out or diving to untangle nets. Some of them die under the water and are abandoned to become feed for the fish. This worrying situation is plain on Ghana's Volta Lake where an estimated 10,000 children work as slaves sold by their own parents for petty change. Well, they are part of the more than 1.9 million children aged between 5 and 17 said to be engaged in child labor in Ghana. This focus is on child slavery along the Volta Lake and Kwetinate has more in this report. Yeah, yeah. was at eight years whereby my mother gave me to them that they should send me to Akusumo simply because he, she has no money to care for me. We were there for 20 years before they brought me back. A child can be bought and trafficked to the lake for often less than 50 Ghana CD. One time we were there and the, the boat capsized on the sea and we were being called at and the land that we should come to their aid. Before we went, we reached there, plenty of the boys have died. It's home to the nation's capital and has 16 districts. The Great Accra is region hundreds of people across the country keep migrating to, to eke out a living. According to the Ghana Poverty Map and Report, the region has the lowest poverty rate, but it's not a land flowing with milk and honey, as the statistics would have you believe. Poverty is endemic. Ningo Pram Pram and Shayo Sudoku districts are barely an hour's drive from Accra, but are some of the poorest places to live in. Professor Peter Corte is the head of the economics department of the University of Ghana. He explains how it's possible to be situated in a resource-rich region and yet be poor. The urban poverty is very severe, very sharp. Perhaps in the rural areas, if you are poor, you could still get food, food something to survive on. You don't need any uh, elaborate, expensive accommodation, you could manage with a thatched or bamboo house. In the urban center, it's quite difficult to even get land, let alone to have somewhere to lay your head. So, urban poverty is quite severe, and that is why you would find uh, people in more particular in urban and peri-urban areas giving their children out um, to others as slaves or selling them to, to go and work on plantations and many other things. So poverty is, yes, is one of the key drivers of this uh, trade, or this phenomenon. Then we can also talk about the extended family, the breakdown of the extended family system. Uh, in the past, if you were not too financially um, sound, the extended family could come in and, and support. Um, so you highly find uh, these things happening. 
but these days the cellular fabulous system has broken down quite significantly so uh, people are basically on their own and that can also account for this um, phenomenon um, I also see the gradual decline in people's attitude or interest in finding uh, diversified or alternative sources of income. Uh, I remember when we were growing up, uh, when things were okay, you could sell things, you, I mean, your parents would ask you to go and sell anything that you could, you could lay hands on just to raise extra money uh, to support the family. So you saw many people in high positions now who have actually sold or helped with the family system. These days, um, that you hardly find uh, this, this happening. Maybe uh, perhaps due to um, urbanization, due to globalization, due to much more awareness, uh, you don't find that happening. So the interest to raise money through alternative means to support the household is not there. And therefore, parents uh, who don't have the means tend to sell or give out their children so they could be free. And they would also die. The idea is that you don't die from starvation. Back at the village, all Saran needs is support from government to start a trade to enable her to take care of her children. Samson, who spent 27 years as a diver on the lake, and John, who also spent the best part of his year in the same area, say parents in such communities must be wise and not sell off their children. We have many people in the community still who are having their awards at the Kusumo Lakes and still working very well. In fact, we are, try we are speaking to the community that those who have their awards over there should bring them down so that and they all start an education as early as possible so that in the near future, we have a bright corner. In fact, about four years ago, we heard that the child labor traffic people have caught some people at the uh, Volta Lake with the same thing to Accra. In fact, uh, a friend of mine had a child inside and was then sent them. So we're uh, speaking to the community that those who have the child now should stop such practices. The laws must work. Resources must be redistributed. Social interventions aimed at reducing poverty, such as LEAP, should be extended to these areas to dissuade mothers from selling their children as slaves on the Volta. For Hotline Documentary, this has been Kwete Nati. Sad there what a parent would do for money, but moving on, we shed the spotlight on theatre in Ghana. Fine arts or theatre in Ghana is perceived as a non parastine course by students. For most of them, more often than not, it is the last option students will resort to when choosing a subject or course in the university. As the world celebrates World Theatre Day, our reporter, Dr. Zwedu, shed the spotlight on theatre in Ghana by interacting with a first and a final year student of the University of Ghana in the performing arts session. Let's take a look at what came up during their discussion. Modern theatre in Ghana emerged in the early 20th century. It emerged first as literary comment on the colonization of Africa by Europe. Among the earliest work on this is the Bleak Arts, written by Kwabena in 1950. This sudden rise, though, was just the beginning of Ghanaian literary theatre art. However, theater arts were not recognized until recently. A final year student, Joan Boko Bote, tells me this is because of the stigma society attaches to theater. I didn't choose the course, but then it was given to me. I didn't have an option then to come and offer the course. And my pastors have to call me. My parents were all convincing me that I should just come and read the first degree, but then after, afterwards, I'll do whatever that I want to do in life. They'll support me. 
So I didn't have a choice than to come to school because all my friends were coming to school. She says reading theater art is challenging, but it has its advantages. I was giving theater art, history and archaeology. So I was wondering, what is theater art? What is archaeology history? Like, it's far from what I wanted to do. Because I wanted to read political science, English and geography because I had interest in those areas. So I found myself here schooling like any other person. But truthfully, my first semester was not good because even it's it, it reflected on my GPA because I wasn't interested in what I was doing. So I made up my mind that I'm here and I'll be doing this for four years. So I'm supposed to um, like the course, learn it, and then have an impact somewhere, like after um, have, have an impact on the life of others. So I dropped archaeology and then I, I went ahead with theater and history. But at a point I realized that I was having more interest in theater art because it was practical. Whatever they teach you, you get to practice it, you get to, to see it. You do it and then you, you realize that you are, you, are, you are doing something. Unlike history being theoretical. So I had a favorite lecturer, she's Madame Regina. So she taught me the basic of um, theater, where I, I learned the, the difference between drama and theater, lighting, sound. So I was like, oh, okay, wow. Then the course is really beautiful. Juan Bokobote, however, wants to pursue marketing after school. I believe strongly that if you want to do something, passion should drive you, desire should drive you. But then it's not my calling, it's not a desire. But then I would like to do it as a part-time. But then I've always had it in me to do marketing, to do a managerial something. That's why I even took a course directing. <laughs> Rafael Emmanuel Konya is a first-year student pursuing Bachelor of Fine Arts, explains why he switched his early dream of becoming a medical doctor to theater arts. He says he has no regrets. Growing up, I, uh, I'd always wanted to be a doctor. Actually, uh, family members are so happy when they hear their son is, is aspiring to be a doctor. Uh, I had uh, plans, I should say, I had big plans to be in the medical field, but then uh, when I was writing the WASI exam, I had to choose courses for this university. And I really didn't know what BFA was, but mistakenly, I, I would say mistakenly, I kind of chose BFA. You would call it a hand of God or you might call it a fate, but then I mistakenly chose BFA. Came for the interview when I was called upon and uh, I found out it was all about dance, theatre and music. And these, this dance, theater, and music fell in my, my range. I loved every one of them with my heart. And therefore encourage parents to allow the awards to follow their passion. We have a lot to do, actually, uh, to, to capitalize on that. It's the four. Number one is to stop, the miscon stop, stop spreading the misconception. You understand? Uh, we, have to, we have to really delete that ideology that uh, Dance is for, is for, should I say, low-class students who are not so good with their books. You know, we have to stop killing the spirit in our children when they come out to tell us that, Mommy, I want to be an actor. Mommy, I want to dance. That's the first point. If it, it, because it starts at home. And if the home is not really versed with the true ideas of dance and the true importance of dance, we cannot go anywhere as a country. Rafael Emmanuel Konya says the country has not paid much attention to theater arts. We haven't done enough at all. Um, little attention is, 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 is given to dance and art in Ghana. Very little attention. And it's, it's, it's so sad when I got to find out that only, only few centers are available for art. But there are lots of centers for business and medicine. There are lots of hospitals. Ghanaians are investing in the hospital and everything, but they forget that this is our only treasure. This is our only, our only gold that no one can actually take from us and go and make their country better and leave us alone. We, I came here just last year and in theatre, sometimes even before we get a place to study, it's, it's a, little bit of, a little bit of a problem. 
because the number is growing. We're not still the small five, three people that are steady in dance, but we are, we are, we are getting to 150, 250. And then if you still have the small space for us to operate, I don't think it's enough. So yes, the government could really come in here and expand the dance field because remember, there's more gold here than the gold in the, in the mine. However, the artistic director of Ebibigoma Resident Theatre Company in Legon and senior lecturer Ekuya Ekuma says there's a revival in theatre now. Conceptions about theatre or performing arts in general in Ghana, it's a question that I'm often asked about. And I have to say that it, it baffles me why people always ask that question. But I understand because... It is an intangible area to look at because it appears as though you're Zagor or we're playing. But, and, and it's difficult to put your hand on what you can get from it. But it is only when you actually experience it that you realize the benefits of the performing arts. Within the arts lies the, uh, people say that artists are the custodians of a, 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 a country's culture. It is through the arts that you are able to express how you feel about all the things that go on in our society. So those who are able to get training in those arts are the ones who are able to then project a certain sense or um, uh, our heritage through the arts, through how they express what is going on in society today. Um, I would like to link that directly with uh, theater now. I would have said maybe five years ago that I was a bit worried about what was going on in the performing arts in general, but specifically theater because that was where my real passion is. I teach acting. So um, I was worried about what was going on in theatre. But I think there is a rebirth of theatre that I think um, those who set up Kwame Nkrumah would be proud of. Kwame Nkrumah and Tiafua Sutherland who set up the Ghana theatre movement will, I think, be quite proud of where we are now in terms of the variety of theatre, theatrical productions, that the National Theatre now can be filled with people coming to watch a theatre production and not Miss Ghana or um, some other uh, events that are not necessarily within the performing arts. She also added that history can be taught through arts. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, there, there, there's a staff production coming up which is uh, uh, Ayikwe Yama's Osiris Rising. Um, last year, we did an adaptation of his The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born. Um, and these are ways of, through theater, that you can bring something that has been written, a novel, but a novel that, I don't know how many young people will go and dig up that novel and read it. And it is full of Ghana's history, and he is such a philosophical writer that I wish I had discovered him when I was growing up. But it is through theater, through the performing of that novel, that so many of our young people were like, we didn't even know who Ayikoyama was, and that he had these philosophies. It might change somebody's way of thinking about, because he talks about Ghana's history, particularly in the beautiful ones. Ikuya Ekuma encourages more young people to take up the course. Our young people, I am very encouraged that a lot of them are coming through here and suddenly discovering that they have another way of expressing themselves and that they can create jobs for themselves when they leave. Which is why we have a conference coming on from the 6th to the 8th of April. And the title or the theme of the conference is Interdisciplinarity in the Arts, Academy and Industry. And we thought this was, I am the chairperson of that committee, um, um, by the way, is what I wanted to say. And we thought it was important for 
the benefits of the performing arts to be known not only within the school but within the academy at large in terms of the university body and outside of the academy. So we have called for papers and we are wanting people to understand how the performing arts can be used as an axis across which um, disciplines within the academy and disciplines outside of the academy can cross and not just say, oh, I belong to uh, law and so I will stay in law. I belong to psychology. I belong to the sciences. And so we can only find ways of development through those areas. But actually, we should start thinking in a much more multidisciplinary manner and find more interesting and um, surprising solutions to some of the problems that I think we face. And hopefully that will help us move the, 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 the nation in a more positive way. Amazing this. So going to school for four years to study dance. Yes, for most of you who think it's quite absurd, but hey, that's what individuals do and they are being paid for it. While students are often disrupted when it comes to their Sherman Presby School due to the continual burning of refuse dump by the neighbors in the community. School authorities say that this has been going on for months and attempt to have the act halted has proven futile. The smoke from the refuse burning site overwhelms the entire area, including the classroom, making it difficult for pupils and passerby to see past the smoke. Well, we have more in this report. Burning of refuse at the site started at the beginning of this year. Affecting us in our lessons because sometimes when the smoke comes, our teachers can't stand it and we, we can also not stand it. It leads to poor visibility. And our friends who are suffering from asthma, they have to be taken to the hospital and it delays our lessons. Sometimes we are supposed to, our normal closure time is three o'clock but since the smoke has been disturbing us we need to close sometimes two sometimes one thirty and it's affecting our lessons so we are pleading that the government should help us we are also students it's it's within school that president comes out of that lawyer comes out of journalists teachers so we are pleading with the government that he should help us we need his help since the smoke they started burning the rubbish whenever the smoke comes out we have to go home to avoid Lung can diseases, the chairs who can't stand it. So they will ask us to leave early. Whilst we have to learn many subjects, we are even behind our syllabus. So we are this we are pleading with the government to help us solve this situation. I have one asthmatic child in form one A. So the other time when the smoke was being severe, he fainted. And then when he was taken to the hospital, there was like there were things of uh, smoke in his lungs. Now you know, um, smokers are the, those who are suffering from that problem. And then, then the doctor was curious that okay, is the is the child smoking at this age? And then see, it is from the smoke. When it enters the body, it's really it, like it is cleaners inside. And smoke is not good for the body. And then the chemicals that are used uh, with to, with the rubbers and other things, when when, when they are burnt, it evaporates in the air. So when it enters into our body. We have um, lung cancers and lung cancer and other things. Okay, so it is really affecting us, and we are dying. We that like, the government should not wait for us to die before he will come and do something about it. He, they have to work on it before something happens. We're taking this quick break, and when we come back, we have more in store for you. Please do stay. Well, Ghana risks importing water in the nearest future if they do not put a stop to illegal mining. This is coming from the Water Research Institute of Ghana. Now, already some water bodies that serve as a source of water for treatment plants have already dried up and are being badly polluted due to illegal mining, properly called as Galam Same. We asked you, what do we do to control this situation? And you have been sharing your views with us on WhatsApp. We should ban Chinese miners and other countries' miners from entering into the country. The borders in which they pass through to get Ghana, they must send forces, the armed forces, so that when they are coming, they, they stop them. 
then they get back to their uh, country. We have to put them behind bars so that they can see that like we are white because some 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 white things and um, blacks are not white like whites. So so we have to put them behind bars so that more whites won't come and destroy our lands and rivers. I think that the police and the executive should make sure that they are being arrested because if they are not being arrested, our water they can do any bad thing to our water body and people can use that water body and get sick or die. So I think they should be put into prison or they should not come to our country. In my pleasure, I would like to say they should be banned from Ghana. And even it's the British who colonized Ghana, but not Chinese, but the British are not doing that to us. But the Chinese are rather coming to our country to come and do galamsi and all, all those foolish things they've been coming to do. And I think it's not good. Mining activities must stop so that those who are um, involved inside will be arrested and dealt with by the law. I would like them to be arrested and be prisoned for life. There's more news in Local News Round. The Ashanti Regional Peace Council is asking President Nanado Dangwai Kufado to show leadership in calling supporters of the MPP to order. Regional Chairman of the Council, Professor Seth Opani, is also asking the Inspector General of Police to show leadership by introducing a non-biased approach to dealing with the vigilante groups. This comes on the back of the recent Delta Force attempt to chase a newly appointed Regional Security Coordinator in the Ashanti region out of his office. The procurement minister designate Sarah Adrasafo went before the appointment committee of parliament as they vetted the last batch of the additional 54 ministers while answering to a question posed by the committee members. Adrasafo says she will push for 70% of all government contracts to go to Ghanaians, out of which 30% will go solely to women and the disabled. President Anado Dankwe Kufado has directed an indefinite immediate freeze on the purchase of vehicles by all government ministers, departments and agencies. This directive is contained in a letter signed by the Chief of Staff, Akosia Fremal Silpari, and directed to all heads of ministries, departments and agencies who have now been asked to make do with the existing pool of vehicles. Deputy Chief of Staff Abu Jinapo confirmed the President's directive is in line with his pledge to protect the public purse. There's more news in International News Round. The seven Japanese high school students and their teacher have been killed in an avalanche in the ski resort. The avalanche occurred early on Monday near the Nasu in Tochigi Prefecture, 120 kilometers north of Tokyo. Another 40 people, mostly students, were hurt, including two who were in a critical condition. The victims were part of the 70-strong group from which several schools were on a three-day mountain climbing trip. The avalanche is a quick flow of snow pouring down from the surface. At least 140 people have been killed by meningitis outbreak in six states in Nigeria, including the federal capital territory, Abuja. More than 80 of the deaths occurred in northwestern Zamfara state. Confirming the news, the head of disease control in Nigeria, Dr. Nasir Usani, said the death toll was expected to rise. More than 1,000 people have been infected. Dr. Nasiru says the disease is spreading with fears that it could get out of control if it reaches overcrowded areas like refugee camps and prisons. A giant gold coin bearing the Queen's image worth $4 million has been stolen from a museum in Germany. The Canadian coin nicknamed Big Maple Leaf has a face value of $1 million but because it is 100 kg of pure 24 karat gold, its value is much higher at today's price for gold. It was taken during the night of the Bode Museum in Berlin. 
it is not clear how the chiefs invaded the alarm system or carried out the heavy half-meter coin away, but the theft is believed to have happened around 3.30 a.m. in the morning. The enormous coin is probably too heavy for a single person to carry. The police believe the chiefs entered through a window. The coin was made by the Royal Canadian Mint in the year 2007. Well, all too soon we have to go. It's been another exciting edition of News Generation. Well, jump on our social media platform on Facebook at News Generation J channel, on Twitter at News Gen J. We'd we'll love to hear from you. So comment on every story we brought to you today and surely we will reply your tweet or that message you send us on Facebook. My name is Faustina Safa from myself and my production crew. Bye-bye.